Hi, guys. So we've had a few requests to explain <laughs> quantum computing at a basic level. And today is the last day of summer holidays. And I have my daughter in here today. So what we're going to do is to explain or attempt to explain quantum computing to an eight-year-old. Okay, let's get started. Um, so who is first? Emil. Emil. Selena. Cool. Still uh, <laughs> what do you think your dad does for a living? <laughs> science. Science. Right? And, and science is cool. <laughs> um, what kind of science do you think your dad is interested in? Computers. Oh, computers. That is, that is very true. But <laughs> computers are kind of weird, aren't they? Huh? <laughs> so what is uh, quantum distribution? Imagine you have a ball, right? And you keep it under the table, for example. And then you go to another room and you come back. So the ball will still be in under the table, right? Yes? But and but if you if, if you put it under the bed, for example, and you go to another room and you come back, the ball is still under the bed, right? Yes? It is always where you keep it, right? But but can you keep the ball under the table and when you go to, out of the room and come back, will you be able to find it under the bed under the table? Sorry, what I did say. Oh, when you go, when you put it under the table and when you go out and come back, we will be able to find it under the bed. Will you be <laughs> yeah. So this is a square computer. And the computer computes. So it will take something and will give you something. So this is computer, so I write C here. And Lina, do you like cake? Yeah. Yes. So a computer could compute a cake. Oh, shit, it looks like another computer. So let's. <laughs> <laughs> this is a cake. It's a birthday cake, okay? It's a candle here. To compute a cake, you need to give it egg, uh, maybe milk. What else do you need to compute a cake? Flour. Flour. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that wasn't me. This is flour. <laughs> And you put it in the computer and it will compute your cake, okay? And sometimes, if you want, you might add chocolate. And then it will be a chocolate cake. But what happens if you compute a cake using a quantum computer? Now it's a quantum computer. And now it will compute you a quantum cake. So this cake might be all the possible cakes like there might be a probability there might be a chance that you might get chocolate cake but there might be a chance you don't get chocolate cake because this is all the possible cakes at the same time <laughs> and <laughs> i give up <laughs> that's a nice try does that make sense lena did it make sense no <laughs> oh, okay. all right Quantum computing. Anything about quantum computing. So, what have they told you? <laughs> <laughs> you should have been listening. <laughs> Whenever we are told something about quantum computing, uh, there are two things that normally come to mind. Something they call entanglement. <laughs> and uh, quantum linear superposition. <laughs> um, for now, we will just abandon the idea of entanglement. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And dwell and see if we can understand what we mean by quantum superposition. Okay. Huh. <laughs> okay. Superposition. 
Marek. <laughs> yes. So, what do you really understand by superposition? <laughs> First of all, it's super. Second of all, it's a position. Okay. It's a super position. Okay. So, <laughs> um, nothing useful. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, I'm not helping you. When we say superposition, what we normally refer to, or what we mean, is that we have many different states that are equally probable. Okay. So now, uh, in quantum computing, the idea is that we can use these many states that are e somehow equally probable to do computing. But how does that help? Ibuka, <laughs> <laughs> imagine you could you could watch Sister Act One and Sister Act Two at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's super position. Yeah, that's super position. <laughs> but do you understand what I was saying at all? Maybe. 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 Uh, do you like computers? Yeah. Do you like playing computers? Yeah. So, um, so like, um, normally, um, do you store anything like store any files in your computers? Yeah. Okay. So, do you know like uh, how computers store your files? No. In a classical computer, it stores all the information using um, bits. So, it, and all normally bits have two states, one and zero, and they are certain. So, like uh, this kind of data, you can see like they are certain. But for the um, quantum computer, like um, this kind of um, bit is called qubits, and they are not certain. So there are some different kind of possibilities. Computers are. Really hard to deal with sometimes, huh? Yeah. Alright. Can you believe <laughs> that your dad is working on ways to make them even harder? No. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'm trying to introduce the concept of something that is not as intuitive, but I don't want to use technical language. I mean, look at the tiny drops of rain on the window, right? So, can you imagine something smaller than that? What would it be? An atom. Can you imagine something even smaller than that? Something in the atom. Wow, she's already got a good idea of subatomic particles. It's at that level that everything we know about science up until the 20th century sort of breaks down. So do you know what the 20th century is, by the way? Sorry, I should have picked my words carefully. You can just say 100 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so in a computer, there's um, everything is stored as like zeros and ones. And maybe you can imagine it like there's lots of uh, different switches. You know how a switch can be either on or off, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, in a computer, if you just look at what the computer is storing at that moment, some of them will be on and some of them will be off, okay? Okay. All right. And then, so, why we say like zeros and ones is because when it's on, we call it like one. And then when it's off, we call it zero. So for example, this one would be called like one, zero, zero, one, one, zero. Yeah? Yeah? yeah. Following me so far? Okay. So, um, so that's in a regular computer. And then when you run like a program, the kind of thing that you do is like you're basically like flipping all these switches. So whenever you run any kind of computer program like Among Us or Minecraft or anything like this, what you're actually doing is you're like flipping all these switches in some particular way. There's like some instructions that you have and it tells you to like flip these switches in 
some order. So in a quantum computer, what people found is that like the switches don't have to be just like on or off. There's like all these in-between states as well. So you can have something that's like half on, half off. This is what makes it different from a regular computer. What's, what's the difference in the quantum computer and the normal computer? What's, what does it do? Quantum computing relies on our ability to be able to do this, you know, what I've just explained to you, storing information on those um, many different states and seeing if we are able to, you know, use those information we've stored or assess those information we've stored on those many different states to do something useful. Um, if we can, then the quantum computer works. I think I will just stop. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to tell you that uh, why the switch can be in the middle. A kid with a candy is in the room. And uh, this kid is a, a little bit hungry. There's a 50% of the chance he's going to eat the candy. And 50% uh, of chance he's not going to eat the candy because his mother t t tell him not to do so. And uh, if you don't really open the door, uh, do you know that uh, the boy is ate the candy or not? Yeah. yeah, right. So if you don't open the door, you cannot really describe you cannot really describe that uh, the boy has eat, uh, has eaten it or not. The scientists describe the state like uh, the boy is between eating the candy and not eating the candy. Any questions about it? Well, Daddy said there's more than just the middle. Yeah. So, for example, if the boy have is more hungry than, than you think, so he has more chances to eat the candy than 50%. There's like like a half of chance. Do you understand? <laughs> <laughs> so there is more options. <laughs> imagine yes. imagine zero records in this blue. Imagine zero is blue mm -hmm. and one uh, and one is red. And then mm, do you paint? Do do you draw draw some like really cute drawings daily? So no. do you play? Mm. <laughs> Do you know that, you know, if you add a blue color to a red color, then that gives you purple color? Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, nice. So imagine that in a classical computer, you only have this blue color or red color, and you are not allowed to mix color anytime. But the thing different about quantum computing is you can actually have purple. That's what you can't get in a classical computer. Here, yeah, that the switch can be both on and off, and the boy can be eating candy and not eating candy at the same time. It's the same as wave. Did that make sense, the, Lena? Yeah. What? But, but how? What's the difference in the computers? What does the quantum computer do more than the normal computer? Mm. Maybe in a classical computer, you have to, uh, you know, think really hard and do many like uh, complex procedures in order to make the purple that you want. And you have to make it every time because you always come with just blue and red. So you just have to make it all over and over again because this is what you have. But maybe in a quantum computer, you already have that many ca different kinds of purple presented already. And that's why it's like convenient for you because you don't have to, you know, make it. <laughs> Let, let me get it again. It's just faster. Yeah, it is faster. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I think we forgot to say that. Yeah, the whole point of the quantum computers is that it might be faster. Yeah, it might be faster. Like way faster yeah. than a regular computer. Mm -hmm. But it's actually pretty tricky to make it faster because um, we're trying to rely on this whole idea that the like the switches, zeros and the ones, there's other things between them. So basically, you know, what happened was that uh, around about mm, 
40 years ago, about 40 years ago, some people said, hmm, what if we make a new type of computer where the, the bits are not just zeros and ones and then they have this quantum property and then so people were, were theory, thinking about it and then at some point in about 1995, somebody discovered a particular algorithm and they figured out that using this, it does make it like way faster and then people got super excited and that's why actually we're all here is probably still really doing this stuff. <laughs> so Nina, uh, apple and banana, which one do you prefer? Banana. Okay, suppose you want to eat a banana and uh, you want to your father to buy it. And your father is not here, you, so you send someone. Okay, so you send someone to tell your father which one you want, or apple or banana. But this person may ch like change, okay, suppose you want a banana, right? You want a banana and okay, this person may tell your father something else. Okay, he may, he, there's a, like some chance he, may, he tell his father he wants an apple. So he get, when he gets home, he gets an apple. That's not what you want, right? So what would you do if you, you so you want to make sure when your father gets home, he really gets your, your plan. So what, you, what would you do? <laughs> <laughs> one of the ways is okay. You can send more than one people. Because one of the people, he, he has some chances to like send the wrong message, right? But uh, like you can send like five people or three people. So not, so not all of them are going to lie. So only part of them are going to lie. So your father gets a message and when he gets home, he'll give you the correct food, uh, the fruit. So that's the basic idea for like error correction. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. <laughs> oh, I see. Error correction. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah, talking about error correction. One time is not enough. You look at how to tell him like 10 times. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can this end now, please? <laughs> Expression there you go in your face, but okay, all right. Uh, thank you, Lena. That was really great that you could uh, join our video here. I hope it was fun at least. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't know. No, no. On. Um, Why? <laughs> Turn it off now. Oh no, Tim, you forgot to turn the recording off. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay, alright. Bube wants us to turn it off, so see you later. <laughs>